Why, hello there, Jordan, and welcome to uh, yet another weekend in our continuous series of weekends. Yay! Anyway, let's get into it, shall we? So, last week you had recommended Civil Twilight, uh, which was a band that I was somewhat aware of, and um, thanks for pointing them back out to me and suggesting that I go give them another listen to. I did, and I enjoy them very much. Uh, you know, you had said that the album was somewhat similar in terms of their sound, and I guess by album I mean like Holy Weather, right? Uh, somewhat uh, similar in terms of their sound to Radiohead, and I agree with you. We should pause for a second and point out that Radiohead is one of my all-time favorite bands, so sounds like Radiohead will always get me in the room. Anyway, uh, they do have kind of a Radiohead-ish sound, maybe a little bit more folky than Radiohead. Radiohead doesn't really go in for folk very much. But yeah, I enjoyed them very much. Uh, good, good stuff. And so thanks for the recommendation. Uh, I enjoyed listening to it and putting it back on my repertoire. So I'm going to recommend a group for you this week called the Brian Jonestown Massacre, which of course is a very odd name for a band and is a very cool but strange band. So they are or he is, as we'll talk about in a second, out of uh, San Francisco. And they first started putting out albums in the 90s. And they kind of moved in their sound. They started with sort of a shoegaze kind of thing. I don't know if you're familiar with the term shoegaze, but go look it up if you have questions. And then they moved into this kind of reworking of a sort of psychedelic sound, but it would be easy to rework a psychedelic sound and sound like you're ripping off sort of the halcyon days of psychedelia back in the 60s, and they seem to avoid that. Uh, all of the music that they made, when I listen to it, I hear things that are very, you can't deny the influence, but everything sounds very singular and unique, uh, and I think that that's a real credit to the band. They're also just catchy. So that's my recommendation to you. I would recommend that you actually listen to their greatest hits. They put out a, a two-disc greatest hits um, maybe around 2000, called Tepid Peppermint Wonderland. And that would be a good place to start because they have a huge catalog. And actually, I keep saying they, but really, the Brian Jonestown Massacre is pretty much the creative child of one person. His name is Anton Newcomb, and he is the kind of driving force behind the group. Um, I think on a lot of the albums, he actually plays all of the instruments which is kind of cool, and certainly he writes all of the songs, and it's really m very much his band. And so I want you to go and I want you to listen to that band, and I want you to kind of uh, get them under your head, and then I want you to watch a particular documentary, which I'll link to, um, which is on Vimeo, which is called Dig, with an exclamation point. And this is a documentary where the filmmakers were filming the Brian Jonestown Massacre along with another West Coast group called the Dandy Warhols uh, for a long period of time, maybe like seven years. And over the span of time, lots of different things happen to these two different bands. And I want you to watch this movie after you listen to the music because Anton Newcomb, the guy that we were just talking about, really looks like a jerk. Um, and that kind of gets at my question to you, I suppose, which is artists who are doing good work can often be total jerks. And so I wonder, do you feel that after learning that an artist is a jerk, that their art is suffers? I think that this is a question that a lot of people ask. You know, sort of, what's the line between genius and douchebaggery? And so, um, yeah, this is a good case study, and that's why I kind of want you to listen to the music first before you go and watch what an incredible jerk this guy looks like in the movie. And of course, it's probably part of it's just the editing of the movie, but I think even after watching even an objective edit would probably show that this guy is not necessarily the coolest guy in the world. Also, this is a good poster advertisement for not doing piles and piles of drugs if you want to have a functional life. So anyway, uh, Brian Joe's Time Massacre and then the uh, Dig documentary, totally worth your time. I look forward to seeing what you think about them. Not so much going on around here. School is uh, back in full flow. We're um, moving up towards midterm week, as I'm sure you have fond memories of midterm week. And we're just kind of going through it, you know, um, just moving along, chugging right along in the curriculum. Everybody's doing really well. 
it was really nice to see you last weekend. Um, I hope that you guys, that you had a fun time. Uh, you guys, I guess, because I include uh, your mom for making that lovely and wonderful cake, um, which we gave a nice home to over the entire week. And yeah, we're just kind of hanging out on this kind of nih Sunday. Maybe we'll take the kid out for a little walk. And then we'll just kind of repeat. We're in a repeat cycle currently at work, which is uh, always nice when everything's flowing like that. It's one of the things that makes being a teacher really, really nice when everybody's kind of just humming right along. All right, my friend, that's it for this week. And I look forward to seeing what you think about this group and this documentary, if you do have time to watch it, and what you want to recommend to me next week. All right, take it easy. Thank you.